In the 90s, Playmates Toys made the deepest line of Star Trek action figures in history. My name's Keith, and I'm a collector working towards owning all 284. I've been a Trek fan for almost 35 years, and most people are sick of me talking about it. But somehow I've convinced my old friend Mike to review them with me on... Look at my Star Trek toys! What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Keith and Mike Watch. No, Keith and Mike <laughs> Look at Star Trek. Oh, crap. Well, I mean, nailed it. Nailed it. It's been so long since we've returned to the original mm -hmm. set that Keith That's is true. all... I, I'm a, lost. I'm confused. He's asunder, if you will say. I, I, I might have an infection. Who knows? Who knows what's Keith, happening? I want you to take just a quick second, take a deep mm -hmm. breath while I do this. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Look at My Star there Trek Toys. Uh, and today, uh, they're not mine, but they are Star Trek toys, and the ones I do have, namely this quark right here, are getting torn asunder themselves because my cat has now pulled a Charlie Keith, and he does not want anything to do with this show. And no. so, he... <laughs> there's a, he's just He's knocking shit everywhere. That was his butthole. But anyway, we are here. <laughs> Woo! Woo! That... Folks, is a professional start. That is why you come here. That is why you join the Patreon. That is why you have subscribed to this channel because of the exceptional professionalism we bring to every single episode of Ooh. what is this show? Oh, look at my Star Trek toys. Um, so this is actually a very special and fun episode that we're going to do today. Because not only are we going to look at some amazing custom figures, we are going to finish it with a movie. Yep. So, uh, or, 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 you know what? We're going to finish it with an infomercial, but not the one you're expecting. So, uh, very exciting. So, today's episode, the entire episode, is created for us by our good friend Colin Dagan, who sent me this complete set of figures uh, in the mail from his collection to my collection, which is going to go up on the shelf and we'll post an Instagram once it's all together. Mike, I can see the envy on your face. I mean, I, I've, I've ne'er wasted an opportunity to, on my hands and knees, beg for mail <laughs> to arrive. I even had to last week on one of our shows that we did beg for people to say happy birthday to me. So that's true, which is passed by the time this airs, so it doesn't even no. matter. No, that's not true. This is this is going up the day before your birthday. Oh, you know, well, it depends on what order we air well, these things well, in. Since you called this 10 and the last one nine, uh, now they're sequential, and now we can't air. Well, it's because you loaded up 10 before nine. That's that's it's more on you, buddy. You're right, you're right. <laughs> so look at that. I've, I've, I've made a bed, I'm laying in it. We showed my cat's butt on the internet. It's it's well, going good. Uh, if you like. Uh, bumbling three assholes on your screen, <laughs> you can join the people who support us on Patreon. <laughs> on patreon.com slash K and M. Spell out that and. Uh, Mike, who have decided to financially support the absolute shit show that we are today? Well, that's Brian Kaufman, Casey Clark, Cloud Lover 69, Jason Moe, Andrew Hayes, Show Me the Toonies, Jorge Navoa, and the Mysterious, the Mysterious Hand, Worf's mysterious. Butthole. I <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that, that, that wasn't on purpose. Was that a Freudian butthole? <laughs> I had to take their names down. Nobody wants to be associated with that. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Can we change no. the slide? Can we change the slide? Charles, is it okay if we call, just start calling you <laughs> Warp Butthole? Cause, oh, I have to say, Easter egg for oh, all time. Guys, it's... It, it, see, I have an excuse. Look look at my hand. Oh. I had a blood dry go wrong, and look at that. Oh. Uh, CRM Productions, Charles yes. Bandage, at Grim Toys, Delusions at Noon. They get all <laughs> kinds of fun stuff. They get me watching Deep Space Nine. Uh, this month, they got a new AMA, as well as a look at the Michael Myers NECA yes. toys, which is incredible. And also, the week this comes out, we're also going to be popping on a Keith and Watch Mike, the at Mike. Oh, God, we watch an animated series episode. It's a real good one. We have a lot of fun with it. It gets saucy, and uh, oh, that cat's back. 
Uh, I'm taking this down now. Keith, uh, take over. Okay. All right. So what are we talking about today? So one of the things that I always thought was one of the biggest holes in the Playmates original line, and it's definitely in our, uh, our wish list for moving forward, and they actually started to fill it in, but that is a complete set of the original series cast in their movie era uniforms, the Wrath of Khan Reds, right? And I, it's very strange that they never put out the full cast. We got a couple of them, and they were disappointing. They were from the Generations line. We got a Kirk. We got a uh, we got a Chekhov and a, a Scotty. But they didn't have good articulation, and they were sort of on the cheap. And uh, I know that I'm not alone in wishing that I could have a set of the original series cast in that uniform because it's so iconic. Hmm. Right, so many iconic movies. You you know you have you have Wrath of Khan and uh, Search for Spock and Ford. It all of all of them except for five. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and I they're some of my all time favorite uniforms as well. So, uh, but guess what? Out of the blue, Colin just says like, "Hey, can I just send you your your dream, your wish fulfilled?" Out of the blue, and here they come. So uh, we're going to show the entire original cast in these new customs, and you're going to notice, like, oh, you know, we, we've seen that one before. It's in, nah, just wait. Devil is in the details. Okay. So, Mike, let us look at the first one. Let's take a look at Sulu. So here is the Sulu figure. Playmates never made one of these. So this is an adaptation um, of uh, of a, I, I'm assuming it's a it's a torso from probably from either Chekhov or probably Chekhov with a repaint. Now we're gonna notice throughout all of these the really cool part of this is if you look closely at those legs, mm. right? The generations figures had no articulation in the arms, right? Obviously, but they also had no articulation in the in the legs. They couldn't even bend their knees. And so what Colin has done here is swap out bendy knee legs on these, as well as filling out all the specific details of the rank and insignia. Uh, and so it's it's perfect. Now, the other fun thing about it, right, because on the stand, right, because we, we've talked a lot about the annoying stands from the, the 2022 series. These, I think, were some of the best stands that they put out in the original line. But Colin even got the sticker done. So that oh, each of cool. these, so like, oops. So he actually custom printed a sticker for each of these characters so they would all match. It's really excellent work. You know, and, and I've talked about this a lot in the customs, but again, attention to detail mm -hmm. is where it's really exciting. Let's keep going. Let's take a look at Uhura. Yep. I, I, I was going to try to sound effect these, but let me. Let's... Yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll do it in post! No, I won't. No, you won't. All right. So here is Uhura. And this one is great because this is um, either the body from... It could be the Janeway or it could be uh, the Savick figure that he swapped. Obviously, it's a head swap. Um, but this has that full articulation with, uh, with everything, which I really, really like. It's a great figure. Um, just one of those ones, like, I can't believe they didn't make one of these. But these are flawless. This entire set is is completely flawless. I love these uniforms. Um, they're by far the best of the original series uniforms, in my humble opinion. Um, and so I love this. I love this figure. Yeah, it's super cool. I like you said the leg articulation. Not only is it cool, but it it adds a little. I don't know. It's something about that. The the the. the the depth and the contour of the bottom of the pants that I kind of really dig in these figures. And Keith, <laughs> I hate to take away from the artwork that we're seeing, but I just can't get over how cool those stands are. It really just adds the pop. As I look over at my shelf of the 2022 line, mm -hmm. and every time the wind blows through the window here, I'm afraid they're all going to just go tits yeah. over uh, tails. And so, uh, is that the is that the phrase? I should not talk today. <laughs> <laughs> tits over cat buttholes yeah oh yeah, yeah yeah anyway really cool i know that i said uh i get a it gets a little mundane when it's the same figures but i'm, I'm enjoying this like you said and plus after seeing the kirk and spock 
from the Wrath of Khan line in 2022, we only get two of them, right? Uh, right. It's, you, I, I agree with you. This is the coolest outfit. It's great to complete complete the set like this. I almost wish the legs on the 22 model were scaled a little more like this. Yeah. It definitely looks like they skipped leg day on the new They figures. They all, they, they skipped all the eating days. They're very, you know, they're, it could use a little uh, little junk in their trunk. All right. Well, uh, speaking of junk in the trunk, let's take a look at Spock. Yeah. All right. Here we go. I'm doing it. Of course, the iconic Spock, Leonard Nimoy. Uh, we, we actually showed this figure as a reference figure uh, in the 2022 line. Um, and saying that I think the facial sculpt here is actually superior. I agree. Superior they, he, they got the, the age correctly. Right. Yeah. He looks all kinds of young and you know what he looks like, Keith? He looks like young Spock from the animated series when we go back in time. Uh oh, yes. on the 2022 figure, but this gathers his his aged wisdom. It it does indeed. Um but again, you we have we have knee articulation on this figure that you didn't get otherwise um in the in the in the Kirk and the uh, other one. So, um you know, it's a it's a subtle change. I, I'm curious, Colin, where did you get all these legs? <laughs> I, it, that's always a question for for me with the customizers because, like, you have to cannibalize other figures in order to make these, um, and it's it's remarkable what you have to sacrifice in order to make these. It's 100 percent worth it. I got to imagine, and maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but that they do like you do and just gather a bunch of rogue figures on eBay, like huge lots, just for. Yeah and then cannibalize them. Or perhaps it, within that community, maybe they just sell a pack of, like, you know how you can get packs of just Lego squares? Like, hundreds of them? Maybe that you can, maybe there's I, a... I don't think so. But but there are plenty of, yeah, if, if you get the big lots of the of the used ones, then you can just uh, pip and pop, as you would say. Pip, hashtag uh, pip and pop. Pip and pop. All right, well, let us continue our journey. Let's take a look at McCoy. Yeah, I mean, we need to we need to look at him. <laughs> Let's do some duck. So this is another one that involves, you know, a lot of the detail work in the custom paint, right, in order to get all of the division colors correct. They didn't have that division color in any of the figures, so Colin must have had to go in and paint that by hand while swapping the head and the legs in order to make this make this go um and again like the with his custom sticker dr mccoy right there it looks looks great i like the gold better than the it's what he did is superior to what they uh what the original one was so looks looks great it's it's really it's really cool i mean you know I, th I think you would say like these are all sort of you know uh, in a in a series in a line. Um, but again, that's what I like. I like the uniformity of the uniform, uh, and it, I think it this, these figures look fantastic up on the shelf altogether. That's um, where I see. You know, often I looked at action figures. We've talked ad nauseum individually, one by one. Their uniqueness, that's what attracted me to them because I had a, a, I had a non-IP specific collection. However, when starting to collect some of these Star Trek figures now and some of the NECA Toys line, which I will talk about when we get to my birthday, because uh, I got some... See, one... Like, you have the one Michael Myers, so cool, all right? Like, that's a unique thing you have. But then if I got you a second one... Like a pinhead, well, then you're like, now I'm. That's a collection because I got right. No, that's the danger. I got the Doc Brown and a Marty for my birthday, and that's two. And now I'm like, well, with them together, now they fit in a little set, and I kind of yeah. want Biff, and and I can mm -hmm. see that having these now all in their uniform uniforms, that color segment on a shelf amongst mm -hmm. other things really pops. Well, and I and and you're absolutely right, like. One is safe, but once you have that second one, mm. man, you are you are hooked. Even looking uh, at Spock over here with his giant radiation glove, I'm like, oh, I got him. There's Kirk. I was like, where's the con? I kind of need the con. Well, and and honestly, the with the original Playmates line, having just four of them, right? Because we because we had Scotty, Chekhov, Kirk, uh, and they and they did Sarah, uh, uh, whatever. 
it looked really sad on the shelf not to have everybody. And for years and years and years, sitting on my shelf, you, you have you have Kirk and no Spock. You have Kirk and Spock and no McCoy. It, it, it's always been disappointing to to not have them on the shelf. So I, I this is this is a gift that I genuinely appreciate and yeah. uh and like i don't appreciate it conceptually I, I obviously appreciate it conceptually but i actually want these so like that's really exciting yeah, keith's keith was really excited he, he couldn't wait to take this gift colin and just shove it in my face which he's done now he's doing it on the internet for all to see mm -hmm. keith why don't we take a look at the next one all right let's take a look at kirk now this is a perfect example Kirk, I've seen Kirk. We have one of these. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have one whose whose knees bend. Well, mine so, mine does. Well, your 2022 Kirk's knees bend, mm -hmm. but uh, but not your original playmates. That's for sure. That's true. Um, you got me there. Buddy. So, oh, <laughs> I bumped the I, I bumped the camera. Look at that. There's there's turbulence in the uh, in yeah, the spin. Yeah, that happened for a couple of them. Drunk Keith popped in. <laughs> Look, the, I was I was having a lot of feelings about the election. Okay, uh, anyway, uh, so yeah, I mean, this is one of those ones where you're actually improving on the original line, um, which is really cool. Like it's it's cool to just be able to make something that was commercially produced better. Mm. Uh, that's not something I, I I have that skill. Let's look at Chekhov. Very similar. Oh, we're okay. Oh, Kirk did not. Yeah. Okay, well, we've seen a lot of Kirks. We've seen a lot of Kirk. We know Kirk. Chekhov, very similar, right? It's uh, swapping out the legs, giving him the articulation, getting that stand right, uh, and you can really, it, you know, it's it's funny with this Chekhov. As the movies went on, we realized that like fifteen years went on throughout the movies that. Uh, the molds are either like early movie checkoff or late movie checkoff. Uh, each each of them, they've all sort of uh, aged gracefully as we move forward. Um, but this sculpt is technically for generations. This is not the uh, the the Muppet haired one from the original series. Um, but again, you know, you gotta you gotta have the whole set, right? You gotta have Walter Koenig. Whose son we just saw in an episode of Deep Space Nine? Yes, we did. So if if you're not watching our Deep Space Nine show, you are missing out on us talking about Deep Space Nine. If if that's the thing you'd ever want, uh, but you know who I you know who I want? I want a Scotty. Yeah, there he is. I need Here a Mister. I need a Mister Belvedere. <laughs> Jimmy Doohan. Now, this is a, this is an interesting one here too because. Not only have the legs been swapped out, you see that stripe? Oh, yeah, he's got a stripey stripe. He's got the stripey stripe. And I believe these are the legs from his uh, crossover with Next Gen. Um, but, it, but you can see in the reference photo there, he's got the stripey stripe. And uh, we did not get that on his figure. So What's this the is... stripey stripe mean, buddy? I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> Somebody, he just, somebody he smarter just, than me. He just rented his tux pants from a different place. <laughs> I think that's right. That's yeah. Well, you know, that one of them's always a little bit cheaper. If you go a little further out of town, you get the stripey stripes. Keith, that's I have fine. to tell you a funny story about the stripe. The different. I don't know. This is this has nothing to do with Trek. So I hope I hope you like it. Uh, I was on a, in a buddy's wedding once, and we were out on St. John. Right. So we had uh, I had been on tour when people were getting fitted for their stuff. So I just gave my sizes and they picked stuff up for me. So I arrived, I flew from wherever I was on tour to St. John. We're at this wedding and they just got the smallest of shirts for me. It was just minuscule. So we did all the stuff and like I swapped with this guy and he swapped with that guy. And as the groomsmen, we made it work so that we all had shirts that fit relatively. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we didn't recognize is that amongst all this swapping, we'd swapped boutonnieres. Uh -huh. And uh, in all of the wedding pictures, I have the groom's colors. I've got the red boutonniere, and everybody else has got yellow because uh, we screwed up. So there you go. That's how you end up with a Scotty stripe. Oh, my goodness. How embarrassing. <laughs> a slightly wrong colored boutonniere. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> just think about what I would look like in that shirt. Okay? That's what I really want you to well, think Well, my about. friend who was getting married, his solution was, well, it's too tight. Why don't you just, like, unbutton it and let it flow? We're on the beach. And I was like, so let me ask your wife. 
friend. Want some deep V? If uh, if <laughs> for the rest of time, when you look back at your wedding pictures, everyone is going to go, why did the one guy just have his shirt off? That was his solution. I was like, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> Missed opportunity. Yeah. Missed opportunity. Yeah. All right. So now look at that. I can feel your envy radiating through the internet it's true. because I now have a complete set uh, thanks to Colin Dagan. But you know what? Colin did not end there. He didn't. Because in the box was a DVD. Huh. And on that DVD was a, 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 an unaired infomercial. Interesting. From from a certain uh, from a certain certain Star Trek legend, uh, and uh, he he apparently uh, was was going into education, sort of like Trump University. He mm -hmm. was starting his own school, yeah. and I'm very excited to uh, to learn more about it here in this uh, 4K digitally restored version. The Criterion Collection, yeah. Criterion Collection, part of the Star Trek Film Festival. Preceding program was. Our nonsense. There's a great bit in here at, at the end. I work shut. For 30 years, I have been involved in the cutting edge of drama with such shows as The Unlimited, Star Trek, DJ Hooker, DJ Rescue, The Club. But <laughs> now, I impart my wisdom to you in my new moves. We wish I could screw up. Oh, acting. Watch it. Take a <laughs> Are those comic books in the back? Oh, I think we can choose. So. Be or not to be. No, 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 no. That's not what you say. You have to. When you are acting, you have to make pauses that keep to watch it. To be or not to be. <laughs> you tried. To be or not. Is it his brother? Because his voice is so very good. Good. Very good. Amazing. Now, what do you have to be? To be or not to be. To be or not to be. That is the question. That is the question. When the tis noble in the box, do some slaves out of the box. I just watch. Or something like that. Cut. <laughs> Memorize your lines. You have 430 patrons who are waiting for every word. You have to make every single day. You understand? Let's hug it up. And... William Shatner School of Overacting. Where miracles happen daily. There you have it. Oh my god. That's... That now that was the technically the first submission to the uh, the the kid Star Trek movie film festival that we started with the Wrath of Neener, uh, and uh, and so Colin had that just kicking around. Uh, he said that it was something he did with two of his high school friends down in the basement when he was home from college from spring break. Originally, it was supposed to be an infomercial with Shatner teaching other students the finer points of acting mm -hmm. with segments on TV commercials, radio announcing, and how to introduce reality show segments a la Rescue 911. But we didn't have time to complete it, so we just used what we shot as a commercial that aired at the end of a fictional late-night talk show that we came up with. I... Love that. I love it. It it gives you all the feels because if you are a, are a person of a certain age, you know that technology and how much of a pain in the ass it was to go in and type those the text oh. onto the screen. Oh my god! Yes, uh, through the camera because you had to do all the kind of editing using the giant machine thing. Uh, and additionally, Keith, we all know, and in fact, we saw it in Wrath of Neener. There was no good way to signify the camera operator when you wanted to cut or if somebody made a mistake or whatnot. So there's a lot of this happening. Uh huh. <laughs> or just a straight up. <laughs> so that was awesome. I got a good. Well, and he that. was reading cue cards. That was that. That's the amazing part. Wow. That so, awesome. uh, Colin, this entire episode is thanks to you, and we uh, we really appreciate every bit of that. Um, so, if you're watching, if you have other great Star Trek pieces of uh, of lore from your childhood or whatever. Uh, that we can show on our show. We would love to see it. Um, and uh, we'd love to share it with folks because you know, I, I don't know. There's, there's 
kind of what you know what is this show really about it's about the things that we enjoyed when these figures were out stuff from our childhood from the 90s from the 80s that kind of a thing and the the figures fill me with that sense of nostalgia that buzz from a vhs camcorder gives me that nostalgia like it's it all the, the tracking issues like oh man that feels like we open up the packet, it smells like the nineties. That smells like the childhood. Yeah. It's, this is, I, I gotta tell you guys, you know, we, t- I, every time I go into a, a target or a Walmart, or if I am in buy a Macy's, I pull over to see if there's a Toys R Us inside of it now, because I'm just back into love seeing where toys are now. And just remembering such a huge passion I had and still have, it's still there. In fact, I've kept teasing on the Patreon. We'll do one of these days. I've got, my case of Dick Tracy toys yeah. that I remember the passion of collecting these and to trying to, because I had to save up my pennies and then hope that the figure I didn't have came into the store. There was no just like order it on the internet. And so I remember finally when I closed up shop and cl- locked the clasp on my little case, I haven't opened it since 1994, five when I stopped collecting six. So uh, maybe much earlier. I can't remember the years to be honest with you. Anyway, it's just sitting in the closet, and I keep waiting to just open it again. Uh, that's the passion. So uh, I wish I had some of my old movies, and and if we can digitize them and get them on the internet for you, if you've got some Star Trek stuff or anything you really want to send us, yeah, please do. For sure. Well, uh, yeah, so that's it. Um, thank you again, Colin. You made my day. We got a whole episode out of it, mm-hmm. which is really fantastic. Keith, we do you appreciate have, do it. Do we have any of your OG collection we still have to get through on the show? Yeah. Okay. No, we we do. Well, and I don't have and and um someone was asking online how many of the figures do I have? I'm still short, like almost 20 figures. So I has I still have more work to do there. We have more collections to get through. Um some of the rare ones, I don't know if I'm going to be able to uh keep maybe you should <laughs> make that PDF available so that we can anybody who maybe wants to just like fill in those gaps could do so. Well, people People have, uh, I've, I've sent it out to a couple of folks. So if I have a spreadsheet of every one of the Playmates figures. So if you want it, reach out at look at my Star Trek toys at gmail.com. I'll be happy to send it off to you. Um, so you can have a checklist as well. And you let me know, like if I'm missing anything. So, all right. uh, for sure. We're a community. We're all, we're all family. Yeah. Keith helping was just each talking other. about that the other day. It was a little tear in his eye. A community. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, folks, we will be back next week with another amazing customs episode. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. Give us a like, give us a subscribe, join our Patreon at patreon.com slash K and M. Till then, this has been Look at my Star Trek toys. <laughs> <laughs>